we live? Is Facebook alive? Everybody live? Welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to the Recruitment Academy and the webinar with Jan Mulfeit. Hi, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, maybe for somebody. Somebody? <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name is Blake Whitman. I'm the CEO of Good Call, working in conjunction with Recruitment Academy. And I'm sitting here today with the hottest thing in business uh, around these parts of the, of, the, of the woods. You've seen him on billboards, television shows, uh, newspapers, books, uh, authors, medical schools, and, and everywhere else. Uh, Jan Mulfeit, we're very pleased to have him here today. Hi guys. Uh, for those of you who, who aren't completely aware, uh, Jan has done quite a lot in his career. Uh, the famous one that everybody knows him for, of course, is his time at Microsoft, uh, who, where he finished as the chairman of Europe. Um, but he also has strategic, let's say, relationships with, with places like Harvard Business School, Harvard Medical School, um, global strategists. He's advised people like princes, kings, do you yeah, have kings yeah, as well? Yeah. Okay. Um, some presidents. Some prime presidents. Ministers. Yeah. yeah well, so, I think there's a couple of presidents that could use your advice right now. Right. Yeah. <coughs> we won't get into that today. <laughs> uh, uh, as well as working with with children, with their parents, um, and overall, I believe uh, adding value to the world and to people, and trying to help them be good or better than they even think they can be, and that's what today's webinar is about. Uh, be better than you think you can be. Um, Honza, I'm happy to, to have you here and, and I look forward to, to hearing more about what you've done in your career. Maybe if you just want to tell us a little bit about yeah. some other things. There, right there. There's a one piece I did quite differently from the others and that's all in my book, The Positive Leader. This is the Czech version now. We will have a Russian version after the new year. Mm -hmm. And in the H1 next year, uh, the book will be published in China mm -hmm. and in Vietnam. Well. Uh, what is positive leadership? Basically, positive leadership means to find the best in the people. And I today coach people like Olympic Games winners, some doctors, some artists, obviously top managers. In the, in the groups, you put them together. So there's a, syn there's a lot of synergy mm -hmm. and you need to inspire them. But this is basically positive leadership, which I did almost 20 years ago for the first time mm -hmm. when I was running Center Eastern Europe in Microsoft. And I, I took over team, which results were like average or below the average. And suddenly, once we apply positive leadership, we were four years in a row, best performing team around the world wow. for Microsoft, when Microsoft was the biggest company in the world on stock exchange, right? So it is interesting because we are living, Blake and, 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 and the guys uh, online, we are living in an interesting world because this is exponential world, definitely, right? Yes, there, yes. There's a Moore law, Gordon Moore was a guy who was one of the founders in Intel and he said almost uh, 50 years ago that every second year, every 18 to 24 months, you know, we will double <coughs> computing power, computing capacity around mm -hmm. the world, which means we are doubling amount of the information, we are doubling amount of the stress and there is something I call time compression. And it's not necessary what is change in economy, but we are significantly changing how things are. If you take today like Mercedes, it's more software product because 60% mm -hmm. of the budget for the new Mercedes is software. There's yeah. like 16 full-fledged computers as opposed to the car products, right? Well, and you can well. go one industry by the other. So why we are living in definitely exponential world, our brain, unless it's trained, is not ready for that exponential world. Because our brain, if it's like out of the comfort zone, behaves the same way like the brains of our predecessors 10,000 years ago, which mm -hmm. means fight or fly. Sometimes today they are saying fight, fly or freeze, which means like do nothing. Yes. Right? And interestingly enough, you know, when we are born as a, as a, as a kids, we have like 100 billion neurons, the, the brain cells. And those brain cells are connected based on our talents from mm. the mother's side mm. and the father's mm. side. Mm. Those connections are called synapses. Okay. Yes. And more the child is playing with the toys, supporting the natural talents, that child is growing more and more. You may remember 
Blake, from your childhood, that you were playing with some toys all the time. Yes. Some toys you were like throwing away. Yeah. Because you have a capacity, you know, from, from the nature to realize what is giving you energy. Those are like your natural talents. What is getting energy from you? And that's why some toys you were throwing away. And those toys where you were really playing deeply, your father and mother, may, maybe they were calling you for the dinner or for the lunch, mm -hmm. you were not hearing them. Correct. Because that child is in so-called flow. Mm -hmm. Flow are the moments when your, you know, the challenge is very high. You, for example, you are putting together something with Lego, you know, right? Yeah. But you, your talent is up in flow, basically. What is happening in the frontal cortex, your, I call it internal Rolex, which is like internal time management, time mm -hmm. measurement, you know, it's gone. Mm -hmm. That's why you are not hearing your mom or dad. And your internal critique, you know, right, which is the amygdala, emotional part of the brain for the kids, you know, when we, when we are, you know, giving those lessons to the kids, we call it chimp. This is the internal chimp mm -hmm. because the chimp from the nature is jumping from one thing to the other. That chimp was enabling us to survive, but unfortunately, if you are in the flow, that chimp is trying to do so-called emotional hijack. So the mm -hmm. chimp is not good for you when, when you are in the flow. And that's why that child is growing so much. Uh, Bruce Lipton, very famous uh, uh, guy, you know, who is very famous in, in terms of uh, the, how the kids are behaving in the childhood and what are the genetics, what, what they call epigenetics, like above the genetics, mm -hmm. is saying that the child is pretty much up to the seven years old in hypnosis, right? The mm -hmm. brain is on alpha or theta. Long time people thought that in order to give optimal performance, your, your brain needs to go very on the high frequency. The opposite is true. Mm -hmm. You need to go to alpha frequency or theta to make sure that, that you know, uh, time management, the time me measurement and the internal critique is gone, basically. I'll give you one example. The child is playing, the adult is with the, with the, with the toys, with the Lego. The, the, the adult is coming and saying like, wow, it's so complicated. I will never, ever do that because the adult brain is pretty much in the past or in the future, not in the present moment. The child brain is in the present moment. And the only question is, where should I put this cubicle? That's the only question. It's not about what happened with that, you know, construction in the past or what will happen in the future. It's here and now. That's why the child is able to be in the flow. And the, the synapses is putting, you know, neuron together with the other neuron, right? Mm -hmm. This is why if people in general are in the flow, those are numbers from McKinsey, from the consulting organization, yep. your productivity goes up to by 500%. You're learning 450% faster wow. and you are 400% uh, more creative. That's mm -hmm. why 98% of the kids when they are six years old are showing high creativity. <laughs> when they are like going to work, which is like 25 years old, only 2%, right? Because school in general is killing creativity, right? Yeah. Because school yeah. is like, this is, the, this is the only way how you can solve the issue. And th there is a basic question why people are, you know, progressing so fast. And the, and the, the basic question is, can we do it differently? That very question is skilled in the school, right? Definitely, I mean, I'm not definitely. talking about Montessori schools or Waldorf sure, or sure. some exceptional schools, sure. but in general, this is it. And it's opposite what Comenius, the big, you know, uh, school, uh, scholar in the uh, 17th century was saying in his great book, uh, School by Play, Scholar Ludus. He was saying, if you tell them, they'll forget. If you show them, they may remember. If you involve them, that's about learning in the flow, involving all senses, then they will understand. And that's the way how you can learn. There's a good news, though. There's something we, which we call neuroplasticity, which mm -hmm. thanks to the you know, uh, computer tomography, we figure out that the brain can be rewired even when you are 50, 60 years old. If you will figure out what are your natural talents, those synapses will get rewired basically, yes. right? And I give you one example how the brain is working. We have a logical part of the brain and that's, that's kind of, you know, uh, slow. Then we have that emotion, that, that's the chimp, that, so the, it's faster, so it's five, the speed is five. Mm -hmm. And then we have subconsciousness. Subconsciousness is a part of the brain where all whatever you were living through, all ideas and everything is put there. It's mm -hmm. all like data mm -hmm. collection. It's like the hard disk and that, that's why it's so fast. Yes. Now, the best performers are <laughs> playing, whether in the sport, business or the art, are playing almost 100% in the flow. I'll explain you uh, what is happening in Federer, you know, brain. Yeah, Federer right. is the player who returned the highest number of 
match balls. Match ball is the toughest moment in the tennis. Yeah. Yes. But he's playing even match balls like a first ball, you know, right? Yeah. Wow. So recently, the, the Czech player, Tomas Berdy, got like two match balls against, you know, Federer. So let's go and look what was happening in the Federer's brain and then what was happening in the, in the Berdy, Berdy brain. Uh, the Federer brain, the, the chimp, the, the E, you know, the emotions is like, oh, what should I do? What should I do? There are two match balls. But the computer is basically saying, cool down, mm -hmm. you return back 20 match balls, Federer is going back to uh, to the floor. Now, what was happening in the in the Bernadic brain? His, you know, chimpanzee was like, oh, I may, I may, you know, win over the Federer, I may win. So that was, you know, preliminary kind of the thinking about, so the brain was in the future, was not now, not, not here and now. That's why he lost both match balls and Federer, you know, won. That's, Berdych is for sure a good player, but Federer is the master. But, but tell me something, Honzo. This, this is okay. great. I, I play a lot of sports as right. well. And sometimes in, in golf, for example, right. I start doing really well against right. a really hard component. Yeah. And I start doing the same thing. Oh my gosh, if I make this yeah. putt, it's just going to... But the, how can I get myself to the stop real, making that? Blank, the, the real problem is more... We, if you take the, this, you know, uh, thing, right? Okay, if you have the, his, you know, the results, okay? And this is the activity. Yeah. If we are like 100% attached to the results, which means we are not in the present moment because yeah. if you are attached to results, you are in the past or in the future. Mm -hmm. And that's why you are like scared to death and very often we are losing. If we are like, I like my game very mm -hmm. much and that game is going one present moment after the other. Tennis is won one ball after the other. When I was doing some presentations to Bill Gates, Gate, Gates, it was like one number or Steve Ballmer, it was one, one number after the other, maybe the whole day, Yes. but really one present moment after the other. That's the same with the song when I'm, you know, coaching some singers, that's the same thing. Now, from what I said, and this is the last point and then we will open okay. for, for okay. the Q&A, from what I said, it's clear that whatever you're putting in the computer, in your subconsciousness, that's the key. Better data you put there, it's like the garden. If you are watering the garden, taking care of that, you know, there are, yeah. there are a lot of flowers. If yes. not, you know, there yes. are no flowers, absolutely. <laughs> and there is this equation, S equals T multiplied by I. Mm. T means your natural talent. More mm. you are investing, and it doesn't mean the money. It means like, like using the talent, reading yeah. about somebody with the, uh, similar talent, watching somebody, mm -hmm. visualizing, and so on. More you do, what do you have real talent for? Then it's becoming strengths, and the better, data better computer data you putting in your subconsciousness and that's the way how you are becoming the ma mm -hmm. how how the real mastery is happening because the thing is more you do what you like and what, what is like real you i mean in microsoft i was saying be more of who you are mm -hmm. right yeah. which, which is a great i believe great thing because that's because people should realize the flow and the present moment it's our natural status, you know, right? But unfortunately, everybody else is pushing us out, 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 of, out of that. Yep. And really, today, I coach some Olympic Games winners, some, you know, like violin players, you know, top managers who are running large companies, the best, you know, uh, champions. I mean, the people who are able to get in the flow, but stay in the flow, are those who are using their strengths. Mm. Because weakness will never, ever, ever put you in the flow where, you know, the, the best performance is happening well okay said. Well said. that's for the uh, just start. just just for everybody to know whenever there, there's a question you can uh, put it into to the system and we'll see it up here we can answer it uh, with uh, well with due time whenever we have time to answer so please you can start Absolutely. some questions already yeah um, so super opening and super intro thank you thank you for that um, you talked about flow you talked about doing what you what you love you talked about uh, being positive and not going on the onto your negatives and things right. that you don't do well but we're living in an age right now with lots and lots of chimps, mm -hmm. lots and lots of distractions all over, more right. than ever before, yeah. right? So there, there's there's digital things hitting us all right. over the place. How in the world can we stay focused with uh, such a significant amount of distractions? Right. There are a couple of things how to get in the present moment to flow and how to stay there. Mm. The one thing which is always here and now, it's our breath. Because if breath would be in the past or in the future, we would not survive, obviously. So right. the people, whether those are like athletes or, you know, some managers, if they have a problem with the, with the chimpanzee in the brain, I'm telling them, okay, guys, if you will be able to make your breath regular, because usually mm -hmm. if you are like out of the comfort zone, basically fight or fly, you are breathing here, yep. you're getting red, maybe you are shivering, stuff like that, right? Yep. It's a typical thing. Yes. Yes. Once you start to breathe, you know, regularly, 
your chimp in your brains, which is called amygdala, it's a, it's emotional mm-hmm. part of the brain, will think, okay, basically the danger is gone and it goes to sleep. I'm always telling kids, I'm telling them, well, what will happen if you will give, you know, banana to the chimp? And kids are saying, banana, they will cool down and suddenly maybe they'll go sleep. I said, exactly. Mm-hmm. And that banana, it's your breath. <coughs> now, I'll show you something, you know, which I, which I teach and it's called box breathing, mm-hmm. where you basically breathe up for five. Here you stay, you keep it for five. You breathe out four or five and you do it four to five times and your breath will get regular mm-hmm. and your chin will go to sleep and you have you are able to go to the flow. And, and you, you, you can five up. Yeah, five up, five, five, down. five down, keep again, and that's why it's in the box. And, and, I, and I assume this is breathing from the uh, from exactly the bottom, from the from the, the bottom. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And so <laughs> that's uh, that that's one point. The other point is if because your body is always here and now, so if you are able to like realize, okay, my body is here and now, and very often what I'm giving, if like concentration goes down, I'm giving this advice, like try to put like your, you know, uh, uh, toes on your uh, on your feet, you know, mm-hmm. try to realize, hey, those are my toes, mm-hmm. and you will get like signal from, you know, your from your brain, and the whole, you know, body will realize, here I am, here and now, you know, right? And it's, uh, you will get better, you will mm-hmm. get better and better. The thing is, if you do something you like, if there's an emotional connection, I give you one example, okay. right? I was recently in the, some gymnasium, 400 students, the director of the gymnasium, she asked me, how comes nobody was like pulling out, you know, PC or tablet or phone? I said, director, did you watch what I did? I did like every five, seven minutes, one story. Because yep. that's the way how our brain is wired yep. and how we were like handing over the information and the whole history, right? Yes. The, those, you know, tools, I mean, are here for a very short time and the good story can be the technology. Technology ob- yeah. ob- is obviously a tool. It's, I mean, sure, it's, sure. it's good in the majority of the cases, but it can also, like the mm-hmm. we said, you know, the time compression or like the kids are losing, you know, ability to pay attention. Yeah. Today, like the whole population is able to pay attention 11 minutes. Correct, only. correct. That's a very yeah. short time, if yeah. you think. And it, but but storytelling is a way, I mean, you even use it in the in the book. There's lots of stories about yeah, your, what, what yeah, you've yeah. experienced. Storytelling, we even do it with, within our business instead of telling a job description right. we tell them a story of, of right. the client and what they're doing and uh, from what I've read people don't remember a description but they rem- remember a story what, what's what's special about storytelling that you're able to kind of uh, convey such be, a message because the that was the way since you know humankind started you know to exist how we handed over information that's how our brain is wired obviously the brains are our of our kids are wired because of the computers yeah. and all devices are wired a bit differently but if there is a good story it's simply genetics you know right we, yeah. we've got it and they will start to pay attention we do like every second day with my counterpart katarina novotna we do courses for the for the unlocking you know uh, children potential are unlocking human potential for the for the students yep. and we don't have any issue because mm-hmm. they are paying attention because it's there's a lot of studies and it's like emotionally connected you know yeah, right yeah well let, let's talk about kids for a second and and flow right you know, what 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 can be done with with kids and flow you mentioned already mm-hmm. toys uh and and i like the idea i've got two boys they're they get quite distracted quite right. easily and we call them for dinner actually just last night we, we called yeah, them for yeah. dinner and exactly what you're saying they're playing with lego so should i just let them play with the lego and you know let the food get cold for, or what's your recommendation for, <laughs> for sometimes yeah but it, okay. yes but it can't be forever but it, sure. the, the, the thing is that if you take like montessori schools the kids can pick up the right tool mm-hmm. through which they can you know learn okay mm-hmm. while in the classical school this is the only way how you should learn no yeah. i mean we do with with uh, Katka, you know, with, with my counterpart, some exercises during our, you know, seminars. And I can show you immediately, this is more logical learner, this is more visual learner. Both learners are good learners, you know. Uh-huh. They will still come to the same result. Yeah. Everybody in a different way. Because it, it is like t- 
telling on Mount Everest, you can go only through that pass. It's, you know, bullshit. Sorry. You yeah. can go through different, you know, angles, different paths. And that's the same. Like people are very often asking me, if we wanted to be like the presidents you were, do we need to have the same talents, the same strengths? No, you mm. can be top yeah. manager with the different, you know, strengths. It's like you, you do it on your own and that's the same in the school. And today, thanks to the technology, technology can enable kids to really study through their, their talents. Because if you study through the talent, you can be in the flow and your studying like capacity is much higher. That's why in Montessori school, by the way, one hour in classical school is 45 minutes, right? Yeah. In Montessori school, it's usually one and a half hour. Wow. Because if they are in the flow when they are learning fast, why they should, you know, get them out of the flow, mm -hmm. you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so what can, what can parents do at home, though? I mean, okay. it, what, yeah. what are some, some practical I think things? What, what if, if, the, if the kids are really small, parents should observe what is giving their kids, you know, uh, energy mm -hmm. and what they are like omitting what they don't want to touch or whatever. That's number one. Yeah. Uh, number two, uh, there is a small, uh, you know, sh like the uh, abbreviation, uh, which, which I call R for the results. So, you know, usually the talents of your kids are usually the, the things which, which are, which the kids are having pretty good results. That's mm -hmm. for the R. Mm -hmm. Then it's I, which means they can do it intuitively. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, th there is obviously the G, which is like the growth. More they do it, they like it, they grow. Every time they yeah. do it, they do it better and better. And the last point is like they are really like IL, which means like they are looking forward. Once they finish it, they are asking you, when can I play again with that toy? So this is usually what is the what is the talent. So results, intuition, growth, and they really like what they do, right? Okay. Okay, and when it comes to schoolwork, when they don't want to do schoolwork, when they don't want to, I mean, they they don't want to do the schoolwork. Yeah. Obviously, you know, there, there needs to be some negotiation, but yes. then uh, you know, you need to advise them. Hey, you still need to do something. But it, the good thing is that if the kids will realize, okay, I'm like logical learner or I'm visual learner, mm. and they have a good, you know, teachers, they can, you know, help them how to how to how to do it. I even envision for the future that those kids like you have a imagine you have a class 25 kids for the mass for example i bet you that there are like five kids they are top in the mass and those kids in the future will teach the other kids that's for mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. and i think teacher yeah. in the school will be more like the coach of yeah. those kids because the, the kids can learn together and mm -hmm. this is it i mean mm -hmm. that's what is happening in the work but unfortunately it's not happening mm -hmm. in the school Super. and again typical question like everybody talks about innovation the basic question of the innovation is can we do it differently that very question is almost forbidden in the classical school. If the Joe is asking, hey, teacher, can we do it differently? Teacher usually will say, and will tell you, Joe, what is exactly in the book. And that means like the creativity of the Joe is gone. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about grades in school. Right. Because uh, my kids go to classic Czech school yeah, yeah. where they get grades from the very first right. grade. Um, and what I've started telling my first year, my first grader is that I don't care what his grades are as long as he understands it. What's, right. what's your feeling for parents who really don't have a choice? They're not I, in Montessori schools. They get grades. What, what I, do we do? I give you a small story. Okay, please. There is a one sort of the parent. Imagine your you know kid is coming from the school with a very nice picture with the great you know rating, and you are like, oh, that's fantastic, that's great, and you are getting the best rating. You are putting it on the fridge. Okay. I give you another optional parent. Okay. Another kid is coming and the parent is saying, well, that's interesting. Tell me how did you do that picture? And at the end, maybe if you wanted to put it somewhere, you can. Mm -hmm. Which one is better? Well, for me, the one who engages the, ch the child. Exactly. Yeah. Because the first, first parent is sending clear signal only result that's what matters okay and if you behave like that you're pushing your child all the time results results result mm. what is happening in the children's brain they will start to be afraid to lose basically yes. and you will be surprised we have so many kids with the compete talent yes. like compete talent yes. they don't want to compete because they are afraid to lose i mean mm -hmm. and there is a mm -hmm. the, 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 if you're losing that's just the result as, as you know winning yeah. on the other hand if the parents are saying look i'm interested 
interested in activity, how it was you know, yes. happening. Yes. And that's the same thing. Imagine your child is getting the worst rating in the mass from some you know, exam, okay? You can say you are hopeless, whatever, and that child will create their own you know, story in the brain. That's not good. Yes. But if you will say, okay, it's like 20% the result is not good, but let's spend 20% on the result and 80% on the way, on the activity, yes. that's much better feedback. Mm -hmm. So I think it can be like 70, 30, 80, mm -hmm. you know, 20. Mm -hmm. But there needs to be balance, and very often we are so much attached to the result, and that's the same in sport, in, in the art, whatever. <laughs> so the journey is important. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Once you about. realize the best way how to get fantastic results, it's to love the activity, mm -hmm. and that activity mm -hmm. one present moment after the other. If you do it in the flow, that's where your best performance is happening. That's why Roger Federer is still, you know, winning over like people who are like the other, other players are 16 years younger than him because yep. he's playing in the flow. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, there, there's a lot of fantastic athletes um, and big um, s famous singers and things like that who we find out later are actually extremely unhappy people. Right. Um, uh, let's talk a little bit about happiness. You cover it also yeah. in the book in a couple different chapters. You go into some very interesting detail there. Uh, currently, our economy in this part of the world and most of Europe is doing fantastic. Yeah. Amazing uh, growth, low unemployment, uh, nice wage increases across the board, and yet people are unhappy. There's happiness conferences going on all the time. People right. are looking for ways to be happy. What's going on? Why, why yeah. are people not happy in such a, an right. amazing time? I think I've got a great laboratory to study because I was traveling and you know uh, uh, working with Bill Gates. So it was a great laboratory to okay. study success okay. Okay. and happiness, right? Was, was he a and, happy individual? And I think he was happy because he loved software. That's the way how he became, you know, mm. uh, the richest person in the world, but yeah. he loved software. Mm -hmm. So he loved the way, he loved the activity. Yes. That was number one. But once he got, it was interesting because <laughs> that was like H1 or stage one, you know, right? Once he got the richest person in the world, he started through his and Melinda Gates Foundation mm -hmm. to distribute the money to the people who really needed his money, yeah. but in the meaningful way for him, because yeah. that, that foundation is not throwing away the money. They right. are giving like for the HIV, maybe Africa, education, and now for Alzheimer's disease. Mm -hmm. This is it. So right. that's interesting. So number one, you know, I think happiness is not one point on the, on the timeline, yeah. but it's the way. Yeah. That's what I learned, you know. Yeah. And number two, because we are living in the social, you know, world, in order to be happy, you need to make somebody else happy. That's kind of the, even learning from, from the Bill Gates and even from what I do. Because like my meaning in my life is to help to find meaning for the other people. Yes. And I went, I was very top manager, you know, in the global economy. Then I fell down and I almost died because of the deep depression six years ago. So whatever I learned, it's put in the book. I learned from my own experience. It's not, uh, it's, there's some stuff from the book, books, but the majority is, is my own experience. Yep. And when you are very close to die, and I was really very close to die, you think about only two questions. Number one, whether there was a meaning in your life, okay? And I was telling me, like, there was a meaning, but it was a very short because I was 50 years old. And question number two is, if you help to find meaning for the other people, you start mm -hmm. with your family and then you start with the people who were working very close with you, right? And that's why, mm -hmm. like for me, I really clarify my meaning. I did it already in Microsoft, but now it was really clarified what, what is it. And that's why, like, unlocking mm -hmm. human potential, because I think all systems we have, unfortunately, are serving to amygdala, are serving to the, to the chimp, basically, because yeah. all systems are looking where we are not good, where we can, you know, like, screw up. And it, it's good to yeah. spend some time on the weaknesses, but you, we should spend disproportional time with our strengths because that's the way how to get in the flow, stay in the flow. And I'm telling you that flow is a marriage of success and happiness. There is nothing mm -hmm. else. But it, w within the flow, there's this there's this you stress, right? There's right. The, the positive yeah. stress versus yeah. the, the distress, yeah. the, the yeah. bad one. And I, I know people, I work with people right. who uh, really struggle to take that distress and try and turn it into mm -hmm. distress that motivates them because simply they can't handle it so well. 
how, how do you how do you move that distress uh, into positive stress to get into the flow? Th there are that? there are a couple of you know points because before you go to the flow, there is so-called struggle, which means like when you are getting ready. For example, yeah. when the athlete is like getting ready on the stadium, getting ready, then there is a release, which is basically okay. I'm like I'm now you know ready, and I will do what is the best. Then there is a flow, and after the flow, there's so-called recovery. You need to do recovery. Because when I was in Microsoft, I was very often in the flow, mm -hmm. but I was not doing enough recovery. I was not having a mental rest. Mm -hmm. That's why I ended up in the mental hospital. You need to have a recovery, right? Yeah. Because uh, in your brain, there is a lot of chemicals like dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, all that stuff in the flow, and you need to help you know, your, your brain, your head, to basically clean. That's why there is a you know a necessary recovery. So if you are in that you know struggle, and ag and again as you said, there is a positive because some people like artists or some sportsmen are like positively stressed. Yeah. It's nothing bad if you are like shivering a bit before you know you go uh, you, you go to the flow. But uh, but I think uh, the breath is very underestimated what the breath can do for you because if you are able to concentrate on the breath. That's fantastic. And more people are able to meditate. And you can meditate on mantra or you can meditate on breath. I meditate on breath. On, you, on mantra, what does that mean? Me, means, for example, from Deepak Chopra, uh -huh. very good friend of mine who put his quotation even here you know, yeah. on, on my book. He, in one of his books, is saying, so whom? So you go like, you breathe up, so whom? And it, it has no meaning, those mm -hmm. two words. And that's why you concentrate on the one thing that your brain is basically switched off, you know, I right? See, see. And pretty much in meditation, your brain is also on alpha or on theta, like in the flow. Mm -hmm. And that's the best way how you can long run keep your chimpanzee amygdala mm -hmm. under mm -hmm. the control. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, by the way, guys, if there's any questions, you can send yeah. them through. I, uh, or if they can send us if they are on, because it's it's strange. There was yeah. still no question. Uh, yeah. So, you, well, guys, when, when when you have them, please send them through. Hopefully, there's not a problem with the with the yeah, tool, system. Yeah. But I think it's uh, I think it's up and up and running. I wanted to ask uh, Onza about about meditation. What uh, about meditation, for example, for kids? Is it is it possible? To yeah, get I remember when we were. Old? I remember when we were living in, uh, uh, you know, like 10, 15 years ago in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter, she was in the British school, and the meditation was there since really? like four years old. Absolutely, I wow. think the the kids uh, because it's they, the, the what they do uh, when they are playing, you know, and when they are in the flow, it's similar to the meditation because they are absolutely mm -hmm. concentrated on the present moment yeah so they are like naturally attracted to that right yeah. but then unfortunately they are getting distracted by all of the technology I mean we need to have like technology hygiene I believe you know yeah. right? I mean I'm yeah. technologist I'm software engineer by profession absolutely you know technology is great but we need to make sure where we are like offline not only technically offline those devices yeah. but like mentally offline yeah because there's a huge pressure imagine like today in one week, your brain needs to process the same amount of the information like the brains of our predecessors 100 years ago for the whole life. There's a huge, you know, huge, and there will be even more stress. There isn't like natural stress. We have a less natural stress. There is less tigers, less lions or whatever. But we created a lot of stress by all of those sure. devices, sure. you know, right? Sure. And we need to be able to help, you know, people. And I think some, what I would call digital hygiene, needs to be here. And, and so do you think it's still healthy to have kids on iPads and things like that? I mean, there's uh, there's people, I mean, you read about the stories that Steve Jobs didn't allow his kids to use his own That products. was this, That was the same with, with, with Bill Gates. I mean, not yep. there were some hours. I think, as I said, there needs to be some, you know, offline uh, time. Uh, plus, it depends, because if they are reading from iPads or whatever, that's fine. But if they are like playing games and again, games and games that are like strategic games, yep. you know, developing your brain, that's fantastic. But it's like shooting, <coughs> shooting, shooting. It's not good. Simply, yeah. Right. OK. And that's a OK. Uh, thanks to Frank from Liberets. Yes. The text. text OK. Yeah, we, we've is, got it, Frank. Working. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot. Um, Honza, mm -hmm. let's talk about some of the distractions and some practical uses of it in the office. Right. Um, I get close to 100 emails a day. Right. I'm trying to do four things at once because I want to be efficient. Um, right. But I'm guessing you're, you're going to tell me that multitasking is, is a bad idea. It is. Uh, it is. If you do like emails or many emails together, you know, right, 
It's like not sleeping 36 hours, according to some research, and your IQ goes down like 10%. Just for the comparison, if you if you will smoke marijuana, it's only 4%, you know, right? So okay. it, it is our brain. What, what you know, multitasking means, it's like overlapping uh, two or more processes. Mm -hmm. That's what a brain is not able to do. Mm -hmm. Our brain is able to jump from one thing mm -hmm. to the other in a very fast way. But there is something we call in psychology switching cost, which mm -hmm. is very high. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. really good to concentrate on one thing and you will be much more productive i even recommend people if you are like maybe reading okay and you are like finishing the reading and you want to do your emails let's try for 30 seconds to follow your breath so you will like logically divide those two tasks it's really like you know being here and now and you start with the with with, with, with the other you can be much more you know uh uh, productive in, yes. in that way, yes. you know. But right. if you're reading your book, then it's difficult to get out of it because you're in the flow. That's true. Yeah, absolutely. That's true. Difficult. I'm. I was now even listening because <laughs> it will be an audio, at least in the Czech version, you know. So it's going to be an audio version. It, as well. yeah, yeah, audio in, in the cool. Czech. Yeah. I right. don't know if if Pearson worldwide will okay. know, do the. But and I've also heard, by the way, just uh, another comment on this that uh, CMI Management nominated it for the Book of the Year. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah, it is wow. in in UK. Yeah. Well, I, I I think. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback because I, I think a lot of people are like feeling that there needs to be something but I'm the first practitioner there are, I, I need to be honest there are some books on the positive uh, leadership but they were usually written by professors nothing against the professors they are great yeah. but I put there some theory but a lot of you know practice no, even you what I did with the, the what I did what happened to me with the depression uh, is there because I think you as you learn if you are up there you learn also if you are absolutely at the bottom but Nietzsche was saying what is not killing you is strengthening you and that's I can you know sign it absolutely. yes yes um, well let's go to, to one question what is your typical way of fighting procrastination yeah Thomas from what I, London. hi Thomas <laughs> Uh, what I, you know why people procrastinate because they are not inspired if you like mm -hmm. what you do you will not procrastinate so I try to yeah. avoid what I dislike that's okay. and but obviously now it's almost like a hundred percent if you are working in the corporate probably there are like 10 15 percent of the things yes. you mm -hmm. don't like so you delegate those things but no bec really okay. because there if are can, things yeah. like details it's something i love numbers but i don't like like details or fulfilling you know some templates or whatever that's what i always delegate and there are some people with analytical skills and they really love it i mean i can do details but it's getting energy from me mm -hmm. i'm good on strategy like on top level thinking all all that stuff right mm -hmm. i know it's easier when you have a huge organization to behave like that on the other hand you know at, look, if there is at least 80% things in your job you love, I think you have a right job. By the way, Gallup, that I worked with Gallup for like 20 years, uh, uh, Jim Clifton is a good friend of mine, he's a CEO of, of Gallup, and Gallup is doing every three years some study. The last time it was run uh, last year, they asked people in many countries, how many of them are using their natural talent yeah. in the job? Yeah. You know what is the number from last year? 13%. Wow. 87% of those people are there just because of the money. So the whole world is running on less than one fifth of the capacity, right? And we're still cutting costs. Obviously, you need yeah. to cut the cost, right? But the biggest, 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 you know, potential is in the strengths of your people. Even like, I, I tell you what, Shell did recently some study and they asked interesting question. What it takes to be for 200 years among top five companies in your area, uh, right? In your industry and you know what they found out the only thing which is really determined the, 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 the determination for the for the for the success for a long time it's the ability of that organization to learn and the ability of the whole organization is done by the ability of all individuals and that's yeah. why i'm saying that now in this century people organizations and even state will you know mainly compete through the ability to get people in the flow mm -hmm. and to help them to stay in the flow because that's the way how people learn in the fast way and it doesn't matter whether you are in sport art politics business it doesn't matter because this this, this is it uh, and unfortunately it's not yet the case let's put in very clearly so how, about, how about companies learning you know we have the the typical ones like uh, um, yeah. Sorry, here, so this requires inspiring leader to get me to, to the flow. How to work with them if they push? Yeah. 
So what, what, what you do? If you do, un look, I, I do because I'm in the advisory board at Imperial College. If you talk about London, I, I, I'm very often in London. And there was a lady recently from a large company producing airplanes. And she was like the executive VP. And she asked me following question. How about if my boss is putting me in the role where I can use only my weaknesses? Uninspiring work, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, you know what I, what I answer? Then you are not living your own life. This mm. is the life of somebody else. Yes. And every human being got you know, the right to live her or his own life. This is it, right? So it mm. very much depends on you whether you would you know, basically allow such work like you know it's if it's 90 percent uninspired I, i guess it's not you know right yeah. the the other thing is that you know as much as your boss is picking up you you are at some stages in your career picking up your boss you know right yeah so and I, sure. i've got i've got a great boss majority of my time in microsoft his name is jean philippe courtois who was like even totally behind me when i was in a very bad shape and during the depression and Jean-Philippe Courtois is now president of you know Microsoft sales marketing services it's pretty much the tsar of that half of the Microsoft organization yeah, yeah. well uh, let's talk about organizations learning uh, we have the, the, the case studies of course companies like Kodak being really late right. not learning what was going on but there's other companies you've talked about Microsoft you could take companies like uh, I don't know maybe HP Uh, maybe GE, some of these big ones that they learn. Give us some, some examples of companies that are, let's call it, can be better than they think they can be by, yeah. by learning. You know, uh, in general, what, what for example, in, in Microsoft, what we did, like 70% of the time we would, we would tell people, this is what you can learn in your day-to-day -day job because it's, you're still learning, okay? 20% was pretty much like online learning, you know, shadowing, or whatever, coaching, mentoring, etc. 10% were some trainings. Now, so those are like individual learning. If you take like the company learning, right? Yeah. There is a couple of books from uh, um, Clay Christensen uh, about, you know, innovation and disruptive innovation. Okay. And the point is, when the company is very, very large, like Microsoft, okay, case, Microsoft case. You, are, you have a big boat on the calm ocean, okay? You are the big boat on the calm ocean. Yep. So you are on the bar, and they are like small, very fast ships. Apple, Google, they are faster than you, but you mm -hmm. cannot see them from the boat. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. That was a Google search, or, you know, all, you know, iPad, iPhone, whatever. Yes. Microsoft got tablet, got, you know, the Windows CE phone, but unfortunately, we were not fast enough. Let's yep. be very clear. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and this is it, what is usually happening, because once the company is large, it's harder to innovate, because usually your, you know, um, uh, stakeholders would, would you know, uh, stockholders, would, uh, shareholders would, would tell you, hey, unless it's like one, two or three billion business, mm -hmm. one, two years from now, forget it, you know, yes. right? So it's tougher. Yes. It's also tougher for acquisition. So mm -hmm. it is, it, it, it's quite tough. And you have now, you have like Google is big, Microsoft is big, obviously IBM, but it's more like services company. Mm -hmm. Apple is big, Samsung is big. So it's going to be interesting because they, they are cash rich, yes. all of those companies. Yes. But it's harder to innovate, to do really long like incubation in the company and so on. Then you, you see another trend. It's clear that like BMW, Bosch, you know, uh, even Volkswagen, all of those like, uh, and the banks obviously, all of those traditional industry companies, they are acquiring some startups yes. because they started yeah. with investment in those startups because yeah. they think, hey, we need to be faster. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. because they are scared because they have a, in IT you have a company with a large cash and with all technology and Google with all data yeah. or Facebook, okay, yeah. Yeah. and obviously they are like, okay, what those people will do? They have like car, you know, yeah. industry, whatever. So that's why they are like flexing the muscles in like traditional IT or in those you know startups. That's why you you mm -hmm. see a lot of those investment funds from traditional industries uh, in investing in the IT startups. Very good. Very good. Um, <clears throat> There's a question here from, from Peter. You talk a lot about schools. Can you share your opinion on what is the direction our schools should be moving? 
Uh, what changes to the system would you introduce if you were in charge, let's say in Czech Republic? So what changes would you make to the Czech uh, education we, system? We don't need to uh, go, you know, like a very long way because the I used to be like the advisor for the Finnish government 11 years ago and the Finnish school system is one of the best in the world. The, yes. the students are getting, if you take PISA, Program for International Student Assessment, that's what the OECD is doing every three years. They're getting usually with the students from Korea and students from Shanghai the, the best results. Right. So right. what they did, what they did, there, there needs to be consensus, right? If if you are changing the system in the schools, it's like 10 years project. It's not like the inflation or you can fix in six months, maybe the, yeah. the health system, you know, half year. But uh, this is, uh, sorry, five years. Uh, but this is like 10 years. And there needs to be political consensus, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What, they, what they did, they took the whole pyramid of the students, best average below the average and they told them they will move you on your best level so even mm-hmm. students from the bottom mm-hmm. were very much inspired what they can do okay, okay. students in Finland spend 25 percent less time than its OECD average they are still best in the world spend 25 okay. percent less time in school in the school absolutely which means it's not about the time it's about mm-hmm. the quality okay mm-hmm. last year The university, the pedagogical university in Helsinki was taking 600 new students. There was a 6,000, you know, candidates. Okay. They are doing the talents exam if, if they are talented for the for right. that work. It's a very different from like the che- in Czech Republic, the Charles University, they published a couple of months ago some study that 40% of the students who are like entering the school to be teachers, they know At the beginning, they will never teach, you know. Wow. They are just there for the diploma, okay? Wow. So, it, it is, there are a couple of things. They they doing, you know, very well. And plus, I think education needs to be like the mantra for the country. That's exactly what, yes. what happened yes. in, 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 in Finland. Because our kids will compete for the jobs globally. Because the global connection means the, the global competition. And I can tell you, like, the schools in Asia are getting better and better. Students are, like, fantastic, you know, and... Uh, uh, yeah, this is it. But uh, but unfortunately, we are lacking behind because if you wanted to compete on the global scale, you need to be faster than you were yesterday, mm. but you need to be faster than the other guys. So Czech Republic is sometimes faster than the yesterday, okay, yeah. but we are not faster, at least in schooling and education, yes. than the, the rest of the of, of, of the group, absolutely. Yes. Uh, look, I, I grew up in the US and I went to right. school there and our schools throughout most of it went till two o'clock, three o'clock, right. four o'clock in the afternoon, even the elementary schools. Right, yeah. My son's school, Czech school, he finishes at lunchtime. Right. However, he's there early and so his brain, I would say, after lunch it goes right. down. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. So he's not actually spending as much time as I did, but my feeling is he's probably spending more quality time because he's not getting into his downtime after lunch. Right. What, what do you think about that, about not going to school after after lunchtime when you're down, for example? Right. I mean, is that a, a good a, thing? Again, it depends, right? Because obviously it, there needs to be some downtime after the lunch because, you know, your your brain doesn't work that well. But, for example, if you would do like 20 minutes meditation mm. or what they call, I mean, it's among top managers, it's more now very... Famous in New York, it's called power nap. That you have yes. a sleep, you know, for yeah. like 20 minutes, not yeah. more, not more. <laughs> right? <laughs> we we call it WhatsApp, 20 minutes, yeah. like yeah. In, the, yeah. in the Czech you know, language, right? That would that would help. I think in, in general, what is the difference between education in US and in Europe? Yes, European education is general. In US, the education is basically for the career, mm-hmm. right? So I think True. what what is better in US. You you know how to present, you know how to speak. Rhetorics, it's not unfortunate, it's like 30 uh, years, almost 30 years after the Velvet Revolution. Yeah, like rhetorics, the way you should, you know, talk like yep. on the public. It's yes. not taught today in the schools. Yes. And in, in today's world, like you need to be good. You need to have your mastery, whatever the mastery yes. is. <laughs> but you need to be able to sell that mastery. Yes. Because there's a lot of other masters. You know what That's I mean? True. Right? It's true. Look, in my business, so, uh, in recruitment, in, in Google, exactly. if I, I, we have this question all the time, somebody says to me, what should I do if a candidate can't answer the questions well? 
but I can tell they're probably good. And I say, but if we no. don't know if they're good, I'm sorry. If you are not say, able to tell you are good, exactly. the other thing, you are not exactly. good. This Because is it. Sorry. The company, it's you know, the same thing. Yeah. Unfortunately, you can't that's, the, that's the way it Correct. works. If you can't present yourself, then unfortunately Absolutely. it's not going to work. Uh, Onzo, let's talk a little bit about you. Tell us what uh, what is your life and work day look like <laughs> nowadays? After, after the books, I, after the other things, kids. I, I tell you what I did today. Today there was no seminar, no speech, okay. but I still, you know, uh, in the morning I've got uh, some coaching. Then I was, you know, recording. I have a uh, on Radio Z, uh, you know, like monthly. I go like I pre-record for for people. There were, you know, some uh, athletes, some you know, top managers, and so on. I I do this webinar. We have a uh, still some dinner tomorrow. I I do like the whole day seminar of parent as a as a coach. Then I uh, uh, for the Czech version of Playboy, actually, you know, <laughs> I will you know baptize some calendar. Don't ask me why, but uh, but anyway, I'll I'll do it. Uh, uh, you I hope know. you invite me to that party. Uh, ab ab absolutely. And then I have a I have a dinner uh, tomorrow with uh, Katka Noymanova. She's an Olympic Games winner in oh, cross yes. country from 2006. Okay. Uh, and I have a lunch with the with the Czech Olympic Games uh, committee because now I coach. I do like seminars for the for the for the athletes but seminars also for the coaches you know right mm -hmm. and and I do a lot of uh, stuff on uh, 101 with, with with those guys so it's uh, it's very interesting. interesting I spend probably more time now in Czech Republic and partially in Slovakia than in UK France or others yeah. so it in the past it was pretty much like probably like 10 days abroad one day here now yeah. it's like probably not half half I would say like one Two thirds Czech and Slovak, and one third, you know, in uh, abroad. But I, I'll okay. do. I'm, I'm in the U.S. in spring, so I'll do again Boston, and then I speak at the, and at the Minnesota University. I'll open some conference on positive leadership. Okay. You know, so I'll be Great. in the U.S. Yeah. Great. Um, so you talked a lot about okay Olympic athletes, but also children as well. There's these generational questions, mm. right? We've got interesting generational differences that are that are starting to be more stark and more in more contrast than we've seen right. probably with other generations. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that. What are some opportunities? What are the, some threats? Yeah, there? this is interesting because like five six years ago, I wrote an article called "Disruptive Generation," and what I meant by disruptive generation is following. I think this is for the first time in the human history when the young generation understands and uses technology in much better way than the current generation. Mm. Okay. Mm. And there will be like three huge impacts on society. Number one, they will be sooner in decision-making positions. Okay. If you take mm. like Sebastian Kurz in Austria, 31 years old, prime minister, you yes. know, if, if you take the French president, you know, 39 yes. years old, French president, and is the, you, you have the same like Satya Nadella, very young CEO in Microsoft, and you go and you see it. That's number one. Number two, they have a disproportionate say on how family behaves in a consumer sense. For example, 40% mm -hmm. of the, you know, if you are choosing a new car, 40% of that process is in the hands of the kids below 11 years old. Really? And absolutely. And, and 60% uh, the uh, wife. Parents, whatever. <laughs> 60%, I, I don't know, yeah, I would say yes. And, and number three, they are much more on the experience as opposed on ownership. That's mm -hmm. why this shared economy, I believe, will boom. I, I coach somebody from blah, 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 car, it goes like yeah. that business goes like, yes. like that. Now, when you, when you talk about the opportunities and challenges, mm -hmm. everybody, almost everybody is saying, well, it's a different generation. It's hard like for my generation, baby boomers to work together with those, you know, millennials or whatever. I call them disruptive generation. Mm -hmm. But... I coach 19 years old, you know, uh, YouTuber, uh, Carrie Kirsten. She is one sure. of the famous YouTuber in, in my country. Mm -hmm. And I call it, you know, uh, divergence of the generations, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. convergence of the generation, not mm -hmm. divergence, convergence yeah. of the generation. Because obviously what I'm doing, I'm coaching here on the self-awareness, you know, talents, whatever, you mm -hmm. know, the business. But she's coaching me how to behave in the online world, right? Wow. So wow. I think the convergence of those generations is definitely the keyword and those generations can work very well together i think it's it's hmm. illusion you know to, hmm. to to think that it, it will go like separate or whatever we need to okay. work together and and what can a what can a 50 year old uh person learn from a 19 year old then i mean okay using technology and things like, but okay you want to be online and you need to be but in in the workplace a 25 year old and a 50 year old in the in the workplace you know how to express yourself you know right because that those are tools for like self-expression that's number one yep. how to express obviously your company your ideas and and and, and etc yep. and also the way because they have as i said 
they will be sooner in decision making position yes. so you need to learn what are your customers mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. like for me when i was a country manager i was like 35 years old or something like that pretty much those other decision makers but maybe in other industries a little bit you know older than me but that was it today it will be below 30 years old and you yes. are maybe you are maybe country manager you are like 55 or whatever i'm like i will be 56 so you need to understand those you know young people mm -hmm. and it's great what the good call and recruiting academy is doing i don't know what is the average year but i guess like 26 27 yes. years mid late know? 20s oh, correct absolutely and those are like i i take them very seriously you know those mm -hmm. young people that maybe they don't have that much experience yet but the way, for example, if I listen to the interviews they are doing here, if I'm, you know, having my seminars, it's a very professional. It is, I yes. can imagine they can interview, you know, me for some job. It really? Yeah. So that's good. No, no question. I think one of the challenges that I hear sometimes from, let's say, Gen X or, or right, baby right, boomers, right. they say, listen, uh, these the, the millennials, they can sort of learn anything from YouTube. All right. Right. And then come in and say, well, I know how to do it. I watched a couple of videos. I read a nice book. Right. Uh, so let me tell you how to do it. Uh, how, how do how do we deal with with that generation saying these things when we know they don't have the experience yet? Right. They've read a couple of things. They might think they know, but they've got a lot of talent and they have the passion to do right. it. But somehow we still need to kind of yeah. guide them in doing it in the right way. Look, I I think. Kate Novotna, mm -hmm. she's my counterpart. She's now 29, she'll be 29. So she's yeah. 27 years younger than me. And we do fantastic seminar, which is sold mm -hmm. out like three months ahead. We yeah. did like 700 kids in one year, whatever, well, right? Well. So the way we work, it's like, I'm like very strategic guy. She's on all details and mm -hmm. she, I really, thanks to her, I relearn really how to work with mm -hmm. the kids. Because mm -hmm. my daughter, she's 21, okay? okay. I try because I can say, yeah, you need to say that, that, that. No, that's what I said. Okay, I'll, you know, talk and you will see what I'm talking about, whatever, yeah. right? We like divide what, what we will present and so on. And we are getting, you know, better, better and better. And I think that's the way how you, mm. you know, work, right? Be because I think lead, what I said, basically, leading by example from my generation is the best way than to say, okay, this is the only way how you should do it. Yeah. I always work with like Chinese menu. Mm. You have always options in your life even with the girls you know right mm -hmm. when they were young not now not yes. now many okay. years ago many, many, years. many years ago yes. okay. <laughs> decades so and that's the same I tell you what I've got recently on my seminar like three Olympic Games winners coaches mm -hmm. and they are very different from the others because all Olympic Games winners I coach like mentally are very tough personalities yeah. okay yeah. so you need to give them like Chinese menu and that's exactly what they was doing like you know Lukáš Krpalek Mr. Latsina mm -hmm. Lukáš Krpalek won the in judo you know in, yeah. in uh, Rio so he's saying like I need to give him options mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you are picking up what is the what are the best options when you are okay. you know at least and this so is what, what are the CEOs these millennial CEOs that will be CEOs in right. some of them in five years some of them in ten years what, what are going to be the big difference dealing with a, a millennial CEO in 2025 uh, versus you will versus you will CEOs. see two different CEOs you will see like Western Hemisphere CEOs mm -hmm. and I'm afraid those CEOs even though they're millennials Mm -hmm. they will not be able to work that well with the stress like CEOs from the Asia because mm -hmm. Asia is tradition if you take like my industry software industry yeah. all new startups 80% are run in Silicon Valley are run by Chinese on or people from India mm -hmm. the easiest is, well. because they can handle better in a better way stress they are ready for the stress mm -hmm. if you take like Tai Chi yoga all yeah. of that meditation yeah. and I think that's what the Western Hemisphere general not okay. only millennials right what what they will you know look like I think that you know be, because they are less you know uh, on the money and on the results mm. and so on and more on that experience they will be more aware of the other people. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's kind of mm -hmm. my estimation, okay. okay? And they will figure out, well, I need to work with the, with the people. And it's, to me, I work because I worked for like 10 years with ISEC International. I was yeah. in the board, junior achievement and so on. So yeah. I, I'm, I really know what I'm talking about. Right? Yeah. So for me, I need also influence this generation because positive leader doesn't mean only like leading thousand people, but first of all, you need to be positive leader for, for you. Yourself. It's about self-awareness. Mm -hmm. I did, Blake, last 15 years, every year, 200 flights. The first thing they are giving you, you know, in the, um, in, when you are uh, entering the aircraft, 
before you will help to put you know oxygen mask on the mouth somebody else you need to put yes. on your yourself and it's the same with the self awareness mm -hmm. this, this is the mm -hmm. same and it doesn't matter whether you are like top athlete top manager whatever so i think uh, uh, i'm quite optimistic but about the ab about the young generation and definitely they will learn because of those technologies the top guys will learn you know faster yeah. because they will learn in the flow and this is it uh, Honza, one, one more question, then we'll probably have to, to end. We're coming up on six o'clock. Um, what ah. do you think? Is, is artificial intelligence now so disruptive and ready to replace the human being? Uh, current AI in chess, when it learned from itself to be absolutely the best and beat anyone? Yeah, they, Martin, they, thanks very much for the question, by the way. Uh, the, the, whatever is logic based, computers are beating human beings, and for so, so many years, you know, right? Yes. Uh, there was a great book from uh, Daniel Pink called A Whole New Mind, basically mm -hmm. in two, published in 2006, uh, 11 years ago, mm -hmm. about that aspect. Now, artificial intelligence, I think it's, you know, great, obviously. Uh, I don't think that the point of singularity will happen 2050 or whatever is the okay. number. Uh, okay. Whenever I speak, because I coach some companies doing you know, mm -hmm. artificial intelligence, I'm always asking them, can technology get inspired? And that's basically for me the main question, because mm -hmm. if technology will be able to be inspired, then technology can work without the people. Hmm. If it's motivated, hmm. because motivation is about the results, it's about the logic, yeah. and it will not get, you know, you will not get inspired through logic. If technology will be able to get inspired, basically, that's that's a one question. And then the other question, I think we have because of the genetics, we have something very different in our, you know, brains, which is like genetically inherited which computers don't have. Maybe mm. they will figure mm. out how to do it. But those are like two basic questions I'm always asking. I mean, partially uh, artificial intelligence can obviously, you know, replace because you have robots like in Cora, they yes. spend so much money because of the, you know, uh, the elderly population, right? Because of, of the, uh, what, what they have basically there. So those, you know, robots will be heavily used. And I, I think it's, mm -hmm. it's a great how to help, you know, the people who will not be that much, you know, uh, mobile. Yes. Uh, yes. But uh, I'm like, I'm optimistic, uh, optimistic, uh, optimistic about the technology. It's it's clear that there's something behind internet, not clear exactly mm -hmm. uh, what is it, but yeah, that's, uh, it's okay. we are living in, definitely, we are living in exponential world mm -hmm. and uh, our brains are not ready for yet, uh, uh, for, for that kind of the world. Okay, so if we want to be better than we think we can be, definitely we need to stay human and yeah. inspired. Absolutely, and uh, be more than who you are, more today than you were yesterday. Uh, but less than you will be tomorrow because the world is full of the copies, but only originals are writing the history. Very good. Uh, Hans, I think there were some great takeaways, hopefully, that everybody got from today. Uh, I hope you'll uh, consider thinking about flow. Uh, definitely the positive leader yeah. now in numerous languages. Uh, there are, fantastic. yeah, there, there are some, you know, like my email and all the, my web and all the stuff here. Uh, and I'm looking forward at some point. Little, Good. Do I not have webinar? So thank you everyone. Hope thank you, you enjoyed it. Any questions you can email them afterwards and yeah. we'll put you in touch. Thanks everyone. Bye. Goodbye.